Good morning, everybody. I am Raj Gopal, faculty and law practitioner practicing at Bangalore. Basically, I am an advocate. Look more into the law side. First of all, I would like to thank the Vishweshwaraya Technological University for providing me an opportunity to par participate in the e-shikshana program which is one of the prestigious program of the university. Very beautiful program coming very well and helping the student community in taking the shikshana that is education through the satellite through the satellite or through the uh, web or through the internet whatever the means which is available it is a very wonderful program i would like to really congratulate the designers of this particular program that too in this particular hour where the india is facing entire world is facing uh, this particular uh, corona problem this particular type of program is very much helpful to the students uh, in taking the education through the internet through the satellite so i would like to thank the coordinators of this particular program for giving me an opportunity to present ab something about the cyber law. Next I would like to thank Sri Arun Kumar Kannur who is also one of the subject expert in this cryptography and cyber law who taught nicely the first two modules where he has covered the introduction part and also he has covered the network protocols, computer networking uh, primes, mathematical background of in crypto cryptography, modulo arithmetic and uh, basics of cryptography and all these things he has covered very nicely. It is very useful information that he has given. Personally, he is my mentor, we can tell from past 10 years. He used to give me so many suggestions either in my career or it may be in my personal problems or whatever may be. He, he, he is guiding me, he is a guiding force behind me in so many aspects of my life. So I would like to thank uh, Sri Arun Kumar Kannur for uh, giving me an opportunity to present uh, about the cyber law before you. Friends, till now, there is a subject that is cryptography and cyber law. Till now you have studied what is cryptography, introduction, how to generate uh, the cryptographic messages, how to code that, uh, what is the mathematical model of this particular cryptography, what is the hash function, what is the Signature, electronic signature, how it can be created, how, what do you mean by digital uh, signature, what do you mean by digital signature certificate, all these things you have learned till now up to four models. In the last model, in the fifth model, we are going to take up the law issues, okay, who can issue the digital signals, uh, digital signature certificates who can issue, who is authorized to issue the digital signature certificate, what is his eligibility, what is the eligibility to take the digital uh, signature certificates, okay, what our law says about all these issues, because we nowadays we are mainly into the computer, everything is computer based, all the transactions are taking place using the computer only. So in this era of computer, we should know what is the law which is available for us. What is the law which is taking care of 
this a huge network huge network who is the controlling force behind this e commerce or e trading or uh, whatever may be e banking whatever may be everything is uh, internet based only nowadays who is controlling force uh, behind this particular uh, internet or this particular information technology so now let us move on to what are all the things that we are going to uh, discuss in this particular class so i have given my introduction already let us go to the overview or the agenda today's agenda today's agenda basically not the entire class today's agenda before that in entire session okay this particular series of session i am going to teach you about i am going to give the information about the information technology act okay information technology act and its amendments whenever it has taken place and certain case studies which is relevant interesting and very much important in uh, the perspective of examination and the knowledge okay so we are going to discuss about today's class we are going to discuss about the need of cyber law cyber crime okay and uh, the introduction to cyber law in that we are going to discuss about the it act 2000 and the it amendment act 2008 okay and the international laws what the international law tells about the cyber uh, law okay how they are acting how our neighbors are functioning how the uh, countries in our world are functioning with respect to the internet okay and the importance of cyber law in this present day okay in this present day what is the importance of cyber law okay so next let us discuss about the need of uh, the cyber law there is a, a very interesting um, saying that the modern thief can steal more with a computer than with a gun okay and tomorrow terrorist can do more damages with a keyboard than with a bomb okay the national uh, research council usa has given this saying in 1991 in a, its uh, prestigious magazine called computer at risk okay so here uh, we can come to know the importance of the cyber law you will come to know the importance of cyber law or the need of cyber law the law means to protect okay to safeguard one's interest one one's interest there should be a law for example if you are living in a society or an apartment there will be a society existing if every one want to utilize the facilities equally then there should <coughs> then there should be a law framed so that everybody will give an equal opportunity to utilize the facilities and at the same time nobody should go against the principles so that everybody will get their share of resources that is the main intention of having a law okay in our constitution itself in the first preamble itself they will tell we the citizens of india and in the last they will tell that there will be certain points that will be added in between in the last of this preamble they will tell that we are accepting we are accepting this particular law made by us only here the law means somebody has not done this law we have only created the law and we are following it and we are bound to this particular law so there is let us come to the cyber law this is created by the people of india okay to avoid the 
misuse of the available resources and the proper utilization of the resources for that we have created this law the saying will tell the thief everywhere if there is a resources somebody want to have an undue advantage of that that has to be avoided for that also we should need a law there will be a group of people who want to terrorize who want to terrorize the minds of the people to avoid that to create uh, some uh, awareness that there is a law which is taking care of okay that's why also we need a cyber law into effect okay that is the necessity of the cyber law i think all of you have understood this next there are some points that we have to discuss here okay need of cyber law cyber need of cyber law friends the internet uh, from past a few one decade i can tell you one decade it has dramatically changed dramatically changed before 2000 we were thinking the internet means it is a mail we can send a mail we can receive the mail we can send the information we can receive the information very fast that is one thing that was there okay uh, that was the only thing <laughs> where we used to have this internet and some programming we used to do technical students used to do some programming uh, automate automating certain uh, mechanical things all these things were uh, done by the computer uh, after that computer or internet means only the people especially the technical community used to the ex used to have used to access this particular internet i whatever i am telling it is before 2000 after that it has dramatically changed even a person who don't have any idea of computer will come to use the internet or computer it is very much necessary for because for everything the there is a dependency on the network okay it has dramatically changed okay in almost all the <coughs> aspects we are in the use of the internet we are in the use of internet uh, it can be a commerce it may it can be a governance or it can be anything okay and information technology is encompassing in all walks of our life all over the world okay all over the world we are using the information technology not only for one thing it is for almost all the things for example if you want draw money if you want deposit the money if you want to purchase certain things if you want to move from one place to another place one place to another place an internet is very much <coughs> necessary and cyberspace it is creating uh, whenever there is a resource few will use <coughs> and few will misuse the resources also that is a chance there is a chance friends so it is creating moral civil criminal wrongs okay that is also there that's why also we need an uh, law to control all these things to control all these things and next few points are cyberspace is open to participation by all we can't restrict uh, nobody to enter into the any space which is available if it is a public space anybody can enter as a law practitioner uh, it is the right of the citizen to enter or to access any public space which is uh, which is available for example a public park anybody can enter use it and you can come back nobody can restrict if it is a public place if it is a private then there will be certain restrictions uh, to enter into similarly the cyberspace is open to all the participants okay or anybody can participate 
anybody can use the facilities that's why there should be a law where to use at what time we have to use what are all the conditions to use with these conditions if we will not follow this what is going to happen okay next point it has brought the transition from paper to paperless world uh, this is the major thing what has happened previously everything a documentation made means it is on papers documentation is recognized if it is on a paper particularly signed by a particular authority then only the used to believe that this is a document for sending a circular or whatever may be previously the universities used to send the circular through the post there will be a signature of the registrar or vice chancellor or anybody that only is treated as an authorized <coughs> circular for taking any further actions now all the circulars will come online okay may be signed or may not be signed or it may be digitally signed okay that is a paperless world everybody is depending on the paperless world only previously we vishveshwarya technological university or any other universities used to uh, publish the result through the uh, hard copies they used to send a result printed on a paper and the colleges used to display it on the notice board now the situation has changed once it is displayed one it once it is announced in the net in the proper place then it is uh, assumed as the result declared okay everybody can access the result on uh, in their house only everything has become the paperless the next point uh, the laws of the real world cannot be interpreted in light of emerging cyberspace to include all aspects relating to the different activities in the cyberspace and the now we it is a necessity to create a law where everything has changed all the practices have been changed okay drastically it has been changed and it is very much necessary that we should have a law to govern all these things to give a legal authentication to all these things once for one small example i want to give previously the result of the university the universities used to send the results in a sealed cover printed on a paper and the colleges used to open it and they used to display it on the notice board once it is displayed on the notice board from that time onwards it will be considered as a result declared for any further actions for putting the revaluation or whatever may be okay it will be considered as that particular date as the uh, announcement of result after that only they used to give the time now it is not like that once it is displayed on the notice board it is declared as the in result is declared from now onwards from that time onwards the time starts for whatever the action that you have to take further okay so there should be a law there should be a law to authorize that the uh, university to display the result on the internet through the internet okay so that's why we need a cyber law so the internet requires an enabling and supportive legal infrastructure to tune with the times the same explanation which will also holds good the time has changed we have drafted our constitution at the time of independence after 2 years we have drafted our constitution after that <coughs> the constitution has been amended so many times depending on in tune with the time and in tune with the requirement it has been changed so the cyber law should also has come into existence because there is a drastic change from so on so many issues that's why we need a cyber law next what do you mean by a cyber law 
that is the next question that will come across what is the necessity of the cyber law <coughs> that we have discussed what do you mean by cyber law cyber law is the governing cyber space cyber law is the law governing cyber space any space or in as i have told a uh, few minutes back some facility means we should respect that if there is some facility means everybody should respect you have to use it and at the same time you have to allow the others to uh, others also to use okay and there should not be any damage to the others while you are using that particular facility that is very much important i want to give one example here my dear friends you will purchase a car as long as you keep that car in your uh, shed if you will not take out if you maintain that car it there itself nothing no problem nobody will ask why you are purchased car why you are keeping it side nothing no no problem you can keep it like that only once you want to take the car onto the road then the problem arise then the law will come into force first thing you are putting the others into the trouble by taking your car who are using that road who are the common users of that road you are putting them in trouble at the same time you are making yourself you are putting yourself into the trouble okay that's why the law comes then the law says what are the minimum things that you should have while driving that is the driver's license should be there rc book should be there insurance should be there and you have to drive accordingly whatever it has been not taught while giving the license what are all the signals that you have to follow that is the law that is the existence of law okay and one more thing i want to clarify here my dear friends ignorance of law is not an excuse that is a very uh, famous saying you cannot tell that i were, i am not knowing this if you enter into the one way then <coughs> if there is no trouble to the others if you cross it then if there is no problem okay no problem but you have crossed it knowingly or unknowingly for that you need to fine you have to be fined you have to pay the fine if somebody ask you need to file the fine you cannot tell that i was not knowing that this is one way okay i don't know <coughs> the reading there is there are some symbols will be displayed i you can't tell that i am an illiterate no while uh, giving the learner driving license or learner's license it will be checked whether uh, you can recognize the symbols okay so that's why any law is there to safeguard the interest of the citizens so the cyber law is there to govern the cyber space okay to control the cyber space uh we have the cyber law cyber space what do you mean by cyber by cyber space the new terminology has come that is the cyber space cyber <coughs> space means it includes computers networks softwares data storage devices such as hard disk usbs etc internet websites emails electronic devices atm machines etc everything will be there okay that is known as the cyber space so the next question is the cyber what are all the things the cyber law deals with okay the first thing any law deals with is the crimes okay crimes what are all the things uh that will be done to misuse a particular facility who are all misusing the particular facility okay so that's the crimes okay when a facility means somebody will be using and somebody will be misusing that how to avoid the misuse that is what is the misuse of the available facility we will call it as a crimes okay and then to authorize 
the electronic or digital signatures we need to authorize that okay previously we used to authorize the physical signatures only now the era has changed the situation has come where we have to send our signatures digitally okay we have to authorize signature means we are authorizing certain things okay we will we will send that through digitally and that has to be recognized any digital uh, data means there will be there should be some system to transmit that and to receive that so to recognize that signature and to protect our intellectual properties now uh, we are uh, talking of the different terminology that is uh, intellectual property there are different types of property physical property or either it may be a house or site or uh, land or whatever may be there are some other types of property we call it as an intellectual property where that property is generated by the uh, intelligence or through the brains it is the work of brain okay that uh, for to protect that also we need a cyber law and data protection and privacy okay data protection what do you mean by a data a group a set of information it may be a um, visual information it may be a pictures or it may be a letters or it may be a date digital data whatever may be a group of information which is stored and which is used by some person who has collected it for some other purposes for his own purposes that is known as data that has to be protected and privacy the cyber can enter into any place can enter into the any place so in that case we have to protect the privacy of a person okay privacy of a person that is also the cyber law that is also dealt with the cyber law okay so next uh previously we have discussed what do you mean by cyber crime any crime with the help of computer because the first point there we have discussed is cyber crimes what do you mean by cyber crime in the previous slide we have discussed with the first point that is the cyber crimes what do you mean by cyber crime it is any crime which is done <coughs> with the help of the computer or telecommunication technology okay so that is known as a cyber crime we can do anything using computers either it may be a civil uh, activity it is a good thing or a bad thing can be done with a computer using or misusing the facilities can be done with a computer that is known as a cyber crime misusing of the computer is known as a cyber crime or using telecommunication technology will come under the cyber crime the crime where either computer is used as a subject or object if you are using anywhere for sending the messages or sending the whatsapp whatever may be wherever if it is a computer is involved as an object or subject that will be treated as the cyber crime and the cyber law comes into picture why i am telling is we should recognize which type of crime it is then only we can apply law over that okay that's why the cyber crime is the one which is done using a computer using a computer that will be treated as computer Uh, or that will be uh, called a cyber crime my dear friends next the cyber crime can be against okay let us go to the next try there is an interchange of this the cyber crime we are categorize we can categorize the cyber crime into three types of crimes the first one is it is against the persons the cyber crime against the property and the cyber crime against the government okay cyber crimes against the person means individual your bank account may be hacked and unauthorizedly any if you any uh, some uh, criminals can draw the money through your account 
they can mislead you and they can draw the account they can steal your uh, credit card or debit card and they can uh, 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 perform the crime against you that is the crime against the person crime against the property there are uh, i last slide i have discussed there may be an intellectual property or maybe a physical property they may use the computer or telecommunication technology to steal that particular property how it will be done that is the next question that we will come when we will discuss about the different sections of this uh, information technology act okay that is against the property and third category is against the government if we are <coughs> Uh, using the computer or telecommunication technology <coughs> to misuse certain um, government facilities or to mislead the government then that will be against the government the cyber crime against the government okay so if we come to the against the person cyber crime against the person means it may be a cyber stacking impersonation loss of privacy and transmission of obscene materials harassment with the use of computers okay uh, i think it is self explanatory uh, for example impersonation acting without any authorization in respect to one person okay uh using the credit you, you for example one simple example i want to tell means if you write an university examination instead of your friend taking his hall ticket if you write his examination then that will be called as an impersonation that is a very serious offense all the ipc so many ipc sections will be attracted and you will be an fir will be done against you and the police will take you into the custody they all these thing will happen if it is a case of impersonation and loss of privacy if somebody entering into your private areas either it may be a computer or it may be stealing your data then it is a loss of privacy that is against the person transmission of obscene materials okay anything uh, which is a personal material for you okay anything which is an obscene you should you you don't want to uh, publish that okay you don't want somebody to enter that somebody to publish that material somebody will steals that and if it publishes on to the net or to the computer then it is also a, a crime against the person harassment with the use of computer somebody is harassing blackmailing you sending the sms sending the whatsapp messages twitter messages somebody is harassing you directly or indirectly it is against the person then let us go to <coughs> the cyber crime against the property that is property means unauthorized computer trespassing vandalism means destroying the computers data if you enter somebody's uh, computer area without his uh, permission harmful transmission of harmful programs like malware viruses and uh, transmitting that uh, funds financial institutions siphoning of funds from financial institutions and stealing the information and data copyright okay some information will be there which is uh, uh, generated which is <coughs> developed by certain agency or certain person if you steal that and if you use it for your work then it is also a crime against the property okay that is an in, as i have told it is a intellectual property or whatever may be other type of property whatever may be and next is against the government <coughs> as i have told hacking the government websites cyber extortion cyber terrorism computer viruses leaving the viruses into the government websites and making the government agency to paralyze okay which will create a lot of hazard which will create a public nuisance all these things will be treated as the crime against the governments some other crimes uh, apart from that uh, it is like logic bombing okay 
making uh, the banking server not to work so it will create a lot of um, problem among the citizens so many will be put into the trouble entire community will be uh, come in trouble if you do that that will be known as the logic bombing spamming viruses again the trojan house email bombing okay email abuse all these are some other types of cyber crimes which come which will come into picture all these things we will address while discussing the act cyber uh, um, information technology act 2000 in detail what will be the what the law says how to address this particular attacks how to address this particular crimes who is treated as a criminal how the evidence has to be given to this and what is the punishment given by the tribunal or the court for this particular crime which is committed by a particular person or an agency or whatever may be okay so next is um, statistics of cyber crimes we have taken from 2008 to 2011 what i want to tell is here is if you observe in 2008 there were only 267 now it is in 2009 yearly it is doubling the crime rate is doubling yearly uh, now i think it is uh, cyber crimes i think uh, the number of cases is more than a lakh or something like that okay so many things because <coughs> in almost all area we are using the internet information technology then the number of crimes knowingly or unknowingly will also increase okay so the next as i have discussed it is a very important thing that we have to we need to discuss here the it act 2000 okay my dear friends the it act 2000 has come into existence or come into force in the year uh, 17th October uh, 2000 17th October 2000 before that uh, uh, before that we have taken this IT act from an unicetteral model unicetteral model means uh, United Nations Commission on International Trade Law okay that is united nation has framed a law to control the e-commerce and they, it has given as suggestions to all the member countries to make a law accordingly to frame the law accordingly the united nations has given a model what are all the things to be included okay usually that will happen the United Nations will give the some criteria some set of rules a model okay how a law has to be designed so that it will uh, cover the entire world and at the same time an opportunity will be given to the nation to frame a law according to its internal facilities okay to the internal situations okay the law um, the na national law will see what are all the situations within india okay and how it has to be matched with the international community how it has to be matched with the united nations law so unicetter all is a model law based on the e-commerce based on that it has been developed in the it has the un has accepted this law on 30th january 1997 30th january 1997 the unicetter role has come it has been accepted in un assembly after that few nations started working on that our country is uh, the first among few nations to have our own information technology act 2000 okay uh, that is the i can tell this is a 12th or 13th country to have this particular act to cope up with the international law 
the primary purpose of this uh, act is to provide the legal recognition to e-commerce and the facility to fill the electronic records with the government. The major purpose is to give the recognition to electronic commerce, e-commerce, okay, trading, okay, online purchase, online uh, selling, okay, it may be a share or whatever may be, online purchase, online share, uh, uh, purchase and on, online selling of goods or whatever may be to give a legal recognition to that okay to validate that okay if you have purchased on on yeah, in online through online it is its responsibility to deliver that particular goods to your place as accepted in the contract okay if there is no legal um, bounding on this particular means somebody may misuse the things okay that's why a legal recognition has been given before any selling or purchasing means we used to go physically we used to look into the things we used to purchase we used to pay the cash and we used to bring that material with us to our house now it is online we will check it online Okay, we will see what are all the specifications in the online and we will book, uh, we will pay online, then the it will be delivered to our doorsteps. The, so it is the responsibility of both the seller and purchaser, seller and purchaser to bound to the rules and regulations of e-commerce. Okay, that is the main intensity, uh, intention of having the IT Act 2000 and then let us go Information Technology Act 2000 has consisted it has consisted 94 sections segregated into 13 chapters okay there are 94 section uh, <coughs> uh, which has been uh, segregated into 30 uh, 94 sections has been given okay then next other few objectives are to provide a legal recognition for the transaction and to facilitate the e-filing of document with the government agencies, e-filing of document, either it may be an income tax filing uh, or whatever may be, e-filing uh, to open a bank account, you can through online, you can open a bank account. If you give uh, the documents, you have, can send the documents, can copy through online only, all these can be accepted. Okay, that is the major thing, which is the objective of IT Act and at the same time um, few acts will be of independent nature and few are dependent on certain uh, certain other acts which are already existing so here the it act it will mainly deal with the criminals crimes which can be done so the indian penal code 9, 1872 has to be amended properly has to be accor accordingly it has to be amended and bankers book evidence act 1981 it has been amended according to the uh, it act <coughs> the reserve bank of india act 1934 also been amended according to this okay and indian evidence act 1872 was also been amended according to the requirements of IT Act 2000 okay so and it aims to provide the legal framework to all the electronic records the electronic records means the records which is exchanged electronically through the computer either it may be a letter or it may be a document or it may be a book or whatever may be a legal recognition will be given to the records which have been exchanged electronically between a two entities between the two entities okay these are all few objectives that were taken care while uh, designing while framing this particular it act 2000 okay let us quickly go to important acts uh, important sections under this it act for this tampering uh, of uh, the computer resources we have section 43 
for hacking of computer systems or data alteration we have 68 and publishing the obscene materials we have 67 uh, friends we will take up all these sections in detail in the next few uh, next few sessions here i want to tell you about uh, the important uh, sections which are available okay the important sections which are available similarly as i have told uh, connected to this <coughs> how it has to be penalized if some uh, illegal things happen how a person has to be legalized penalized is the next question we have correspondingly ipc sections we have for sending threatening defamatory messages he will be punished under the section 503 of and 499 of ipc forgery of electronic records is under section 463 of ipc and bogus uh, websites are uh, cyber frauds it is 420 of IPC okay for uh, online drugs mafia it is NDPS act a separate has act has been there uh, for this <coughs> and uh, online uh, sale of arms without any um, license if we sell the arms there's an arms act it is a separate act which also been connected with the uh, IT Act 2000. So these are all certain acts which are there. Similarly, we have uh, Section 43 of IT Act. It is there, and Section 66 of IT Act, which is very very important act. The land marking uh, historical judgments has come out with this particular act. Similarly, Section 67. These are all the very important act which will deal with uh, uh, contains the sexually explicit act or conduct what is the punishment we will take up all these things uh, in the next uh, classes and some other sections are section 65 <coughs> tampering of computer resources what is the punishment okay which will be considered which are all the things will be considered as the tampering of computer re resource what are all the acts uh, human acts which will lead into the tampering of computer resources all these things we will discuss um, and then we will quickly come into the IT amendment act 2008 amendment is a process done in the parliament or in the state assembly to alter any of the law which has already been designed as i have told the constitution was developed at the time of after the independence two years after the independence now after a few decades we have passed so many things have been changed <clears throat> so many things have been changed a law should accommodate all these things uh, there should be a provision for this change okay for this change the technology has changed so much okay similarly from 2000 to 2008 there are so many provisions have been changed the technology has improved and IT has entered into many more fields now it is there in now so many other fields also after uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, these things there are so many fields it has been entered the information technology so the information technology act has been amended according to our requirement in the year 2018 to sorry 2008 that is 23rd December 2008 it has come into existence and it has been given uh, assent in the February 2009 and the act has been notified in the year 2009 october 27 2009 27th october 2009 it has been notified as an it amendment act and um, salient futures have been uh, of 2008 it act is digital signature has been re replaced with electronic signature section 67 of the old act has been amended 66 and 66 f 66A and 66F has been amended suitably and uh, then I mean uh, section 69 has been amended 
and the state has been given the power friends here i want to clarify as a law practitioner for certain things the center our is a federal structure we have the state government and the central government ruling and state government and our constitution has listed which are all the things that has to be taken care by the center and which are all the things which are been which has to be taken care by the state government which are all the areas in which both the central and state government will do their rules according to the requirement of that particular state okay so here the 69 with this clarification we will move on to this the section 69 gives the power to the state okay to make the rules and section 69a and b also will grant the power to the state government to block certain public areas through the information through the it through the computer resource which are all the information that has to be blocked where they can enter the state also has the power to make rules in that particular area okay that is one of the features of that so next let us quickly go into the world of cyber law the different countries after the unicef role uh, united nations uh, commission on international trade okay uh, so many other countries also designed their own law which will suit their requirement similarly united state of america has two things one is uh, uh, stop online privacy and uh, protect internet protocol act of the us government similarly the great china great wall of china the china is a country where each and every thing in the cyber space will be analyzed will be studied and if anybody wants to send any information outside that country it will be thoroughly verified checked and then only it will be allowed to go out of that country so a very powerful law has been designed in uh, cyber law cyber uh, thing by the china and brazil and iran also has so many uh, laws uh, to respect that uh, uh, the china uh, sorry to respect that the cyber laws uh, similarly <clears throat> with this we will go to the importance of cyber law uh in uh, the previous sessions only we have we have discussed what is the importance i think you have come to know what is the importance of any of the law particularly in particular this cyber law all of us are living in the digitized world everything is digitalized now okay everything is digitalized all for all the acts we are depending on the digital world only we are depending on the internet only one simple example is if we want to go from one place to another place <clears throat> immediately what we will do is we will take our mobile we will open an app and we will try to book a cab with that only we will move from one place to another place okay if there is no internet 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 at that particular point of time uh, we will be in a confusion state how to go where we have to go what we have to take the next step the time is coming time is over what to do okay so much we are dependent okay if you want to have a food we are depending on an internet we want to book uh, through some app we will open that app we will book what is the food from which hotel it is required okay at what time it will reach how much we have to pay everything will be done online only so that is the importance of uh, cyber okay that is the importance of internet world okay so to protect that the interest what is the law behind that how we can approach that is the importance of cyber law now all the companies are dependent upon their computer network and they want to keep it vulnerable in electronic form the government forms including income tax returns and company law 
all these in the electronic forum only consumers are increasingly using the credit cards and shopping facilities using the internet that's why we need an imp uh, cyber law so the next uh, is coming to the last slide that is i have referred your reference book uh, about the internet law and so many other law books also there uh, mainly i wanted to go through this book because it is a syllabus you want to face an examination over this particular model and it is my responsibility to take you through the prescribed syllabus only okay that's why i have referred this book and the bear act of a on information technology 2000 okay what that act actually says and how it has been designed i have taken from this bear act in on information technology 2000 okay in the next class we will directly go into the act that is information technology act 2000 what is digital uh, signature what is the digital signature certificate what is the different authorities which are there to certify the digital signature certificates and all these things.